Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the 1990 Mustang LX 5.0 drag car. It's a 125 scale Revell model kit number 85-4195. This uh, is rated a skill level 3 in the old system for advanced builders. And it comes with 139 parts molded in white, chrome, clear, and clear red and has rubber tires and metal axle pins. Now the kit's considered a conversion kit because it uses some of the parts, most of the parts that uh, were released in the previous police car version. And Ravel leaves all the stock parts in the kit, removes the police stuff, and adds the drag car parts. So this is basically a two-in-one kit. The motor is fairly simple but well detailed and it looks complete uh, when you're done so you get both stock and drag interior parts and a multi-part interior that has a fair amount of detail. It's a typical Revell interior engine bay type setup on the newer kits and the suspension is very detailed and assembles nicely um, and you do get drag and stock tire options. Now the body's a one piece unit with the hood being separate and there are some uh, controversies about the dimensions and uh, and whether it is true to the one-to-one -one. Uh, but uh, this is the best Fox kit out on the market and uh, the options to go stock or drag are a nice bonus. Overall when you're done uh, the kits about seven and a quarter inches long about uh, three inches wide and uh, just over two inches high. Here are the kits contents and I'm gonna call this an open box review. I opened the box and there were the parts. As you can see, the uh, tires are bagged separately to keep them off of the plastic. And the decals are in pretty nice condition uh, with little carrier there. Now we'll be using Model Master's liquid glue for most of the build, but sometimes super glue for strength and white glue for clear parts. Always though, please pay heed to the manufacturer's safety use suggestions for any of the products you see or hear mentioned in the review. Here are the decals for this kit. They're very colorful and the register is good on the uh, parts with very little carrier. They come off easily but they're pretty large. So use plenty of warm water when you're removing them from the backing and use some warm water on the vehicle along with some setting solutions available on the aftermarket to help these conform to the contours and stick to your body uh, so that you'll have a nice painted on look when they're done. Clear up these parts for the motor assembly and then assemble the block halves, the heads and the water pump and paint the main motor blue and then paint the bell housing black and the transmission silver. The intake and the oil pan are aluminum color. On the oil pan the motor mounts are flat black and the starter is black with gold solenoid. The serpentine black uh, belt is flat black and the alternator is silver and the air pump is steel and uh, black and the power steering unit there uh, also the same colors. Now paint the exhaust manifold steel. The oil filter is orange and when that's dry put decal number six on it and the fan is white and the distributor is steel with tan cap. Now paint the oil filler tube silver and when that's dry number decal number 10 goes on it. I added the Motorcraft sponsor decals to the valve covers for a little extra detail. To continue construction uh, on the motor, add the intake and the valve covers to the top side, then attach the oil pan to the bottom and the starter on the left side. On the belt, add the alternator, air pump, and the power steering unit to the back sides of the pulleys and install that unit onto the motor's front and add the fan. Attach the exhaust manifolds and then add the distributor and the oil filler tube and the oil filter. Here is what the right side of the motor will look like when it's finished. So once that's done you can go ahead and set it aside to dry. Get these parts out of the box to assemble the interior. And the, the stock parts for the interior have been uh, uh, deleted from the scene here uh, as I'm just building the race version. Uh, but if you're building the stock version you would use those instead. Uh, the instructions show the option of using the console if you want to so uh, because for me this is a race version I decided to uh, not use that as well uh, so that the console is not here in the shop. There's a few uh, uh, selective items that need to be addressed here uh, for the drag version you need to drill out four holes in the floorboards uh, for the roll bars and on the seats 
Now there's some old lines on both sides that need to be uh, scraped and smoothed with some sandpaper as well as an ejector pin blemish mark on the back of the middle of the seats and that will need to be filled and repaired. I used a gray spray to uh, paint the interior pan but you can use your choice of color. The underside needs to be painted the color of your chassis and I'm doing a primer colored chassis so I just sprayed the bottom of mine a primer gray. Now paint the engine bay either flat black or body color. I'm doing a metallic blue body and so also we have decals number 8, 11 and 12 and they're used on the core support and then the underside fender wells are flat black. To paint the roll cage parts black or or you can make them body color and the shifter is flat black. Paint the seats a satin black color and decal 36 is used on each of the headrests. Um, the door panels are interior color with the flat black door handles and window cranks and the firewall is either a flat black or a body color with a black brake booster. Uh, the material of the master cylinder is um, steel colored with a white reservoir and black cap. Now the roll cage is assembled in the interior and then start with the main bar and add the side bars and uh, rear supports then and install the seats and the shifter into place and install the door panels and the firewall into place then insert the master cylinder into the booster. So here are the dash parts that you'll need uh, and the battery so you'll also need decals 1, 2 and 3 for the dash. Decal 3 has a choice of either white or black face and the battery is painted uh, black with steel posts so install that into the engine bay on the left side there and the pedals are flat black. The dash uh, is a two-tone gray and charcoal gray or satin black with the instrument pod and steering wheel matching the darker color and I'm doing mine the gray and uh, charcoal gray for a little color contrast in the interior. The details get highlighted in, in some satin black too. Once that's painted and decaled, attach the instrument pod to the dash panel. The accessory gauge has no positive attachment point, uh, but put it on the dash by the instrument pod. Attach the top half of the steering column and the steering wheel, and attach the pedals to the underside of the dash, and slide the dash into place in the door panels and the notches provided. We'll work on the chassis next, and before painting, you might want to remove the copyright scripts that are molded onto the gas tank. Just use a blade to scrape them off and then sand them smooth. Now I painted my chassis pan uh, primer gray and just lightly dusted some black on the edges to make uh, an overspray look as if the car had been custom painted. And the frame rails are black, satin black. The, uh, the gas tank's aluminum. The fender wheels are flat black. Now paint the radiator aluminum with a flat black shroud and hoses and decal number seven goes on the radiator cap and decal nine goes on the shroud. You'll find that when you go to install the motor there's not a brace to mount it on. Um, part number 58 is for the stock version of the build uh, but to install the motor and complete the assembly you have to install the front suspension and then you can use this part uh, as a temporary motor mount. Just use a small amount of glue to uh, lightly install the part uh, in the holes in the frame underside as shown and then now assemble as the instructions uh, provide there for the mount in the engine and this will give you a temporary mount that can be removed when the front suspension is installed. Here's a look at the underside and uh, the completed chassis parts. Now add the motor to the chassis and assemble the radiator and shroud and attach that into place and add the hoses to the assembly. Now install the interior pan into place and your completed assembly should look roughly like the pictures here based on your build options and uh, of course I painted the temporary motor mount for the pick uh, but um, be sure to scrape off any uh, glue or, or uh, paint from any of the surfaces that you're going to glue to make sure that you get a good bond. So get these suspension pieces out. You can see the, uh, the ones in the rear suspension are involved here in this shot and uh, the ones in the front suspension in the next photo. And these are um, you know, all that you'll need. So the assembly is done in multiple steps in the instructions and Revell includes assembling the front suspension at the same time. So 
For ease of building, I'm going to separate those two into different steps here. Assemble the axle and paint it black as a complete unit, and then note in the photo that the lower mounts just glue into the gear housing with no positive attachment point. Uh, the differential cover is aluminum, and the exhaust pipes go uh, go steel and uh, with aluminum collector boxes and red mufflers. I painted the springs flat black and highlighted the spring coils themselves with some steel dry brush. The drive shaft is aluminum, the rear sway bar is steel, and the shocks and stabilizers can be painted to match your favorite brand. I chose yellow for mine. Now we can assemble the rear suspension, so install the exhaust into place and install the springs. Add the differential cover to the axle and install it with the drive shaft, but don't glue the drive shaft. Add the sway bar into place and then install the shocks and the stabilizers to both sides of the axle. For the front suspension, assemble the motor mounts and the A-arms and paint that satin black and then paint the tie rod black with flat black boots. The shocks are yellow and the flat black springs are added and then the sway bar is steel. So now you can remove the temporary motor mount and install the sway bar. Then install the shocks and the A-arms and install that uh, unit into onto the frame. Then attach the tie rods in place. Now we'll gather the parts for the uh, wheel assemblies and note that uh, the fronts here um, have directional tread and then the right uh, uh, picture here is the um, or the next picture is the photo of the slicks uh, that are used in the drag version and they do not have tread they're just uh, racing slicks so the uh, front rims are thinner than the rear rims and the front disc brakes with the drums go in the rear now the decals uh, number 18 are used for the front hubs and decals number 22 are used for the rear hubs so to add a little realism here, press and roll the tire tread on a flat surface with some 220 grit paper to uh, give the tread a little worn look to make them look used. And make sure, as mentioned, uh, that the direction matches on the tires and paint the retainer silver and then insert the pin into the retainer and glue the retainer to the back of the rim. Now paint the brake disc silver with red calipers and install them onto the suspension with the calipers facing the rear of the car. Now you can go ahead and uh, install the tires onto the front suspension. Put a little something behind the uh, spindles there and then press them firmly uh, into place. And uh, uh, since you've uh, glued the end that goes into the backing end uh, pieces, uh, then they should continue to rotate. Uh, just don't use too much. We'll follow the same process for the rears. So press and roll the tread uh, area onto some fine sandpaper and give them a nice worn look. And these are slick so there's no directions to them um, as far as directional tires go. Paint the uh, retainer silver and insert the pin into the retainer and glue that to the back of the rim. And paint the dra brake drums black and install them onto the backs of the tires with dra drums facing the rim. Then uh, install number uh, decal 26 is used on each tire sidewall. Once again, use something to uh, prop up the back side of the uh, backing plates there. And then go ahead and push the uh, tires into position and wheel uh, assemblies there uh, onto the back of the car. We now have a rolling chassis upon which to build the rest of the car. And it's got quite a stance to it. Now we can turn our attention to the body. And although it's a pretty nice body, there are very uh, few blemishes on it. We'll show you some of the uh, things that you can uh, take care of for an even better finish. The uh, fender sides come with the uh, 5.0 emblem and I'm going to remove those because sometimes the uh, decal that uh, they offer to replace that uh, finish look with is um, it doesn't follow the contour as well and doesn't set well so I just sand those off uh, so that the decal will lay nice and flat and look proper. Now there's also some mold lines. Uh, they're pretty light on the front corner and the front bumpers on both sides. So just uh, sand those carefully away. Make sure you don't uh, dig too much into the body of the car. And then when you're done, wet sand the whole thing with a uh, thousand grit sandpaper. Then wash the body clean and let it air dry completely. Now you can uh, go ahead and spray the body and the hood with uh, some primer. 
uh, do the inside and the outside. Start with light coats and then add a little uh, until you get a good general overcoat. Once that's done and dried, you can once again wet sand it, uh, rinse it off, and let it air dry. I decided to use a two-tone paint job for this car. And uh, first I'll paint the overall color, uh, which is the lighter color. And then I masked off the area that I wanted to protect. And uh, then I'll paint the second color on the unmasked area only. Now it's important to use some good uh, fine line tape here. I use a product called 3M Fine Line um, so that you can uh, tape the edges and not get too much bleed through. After the second color is applied, remove the masking and do any touch work and detail that uh, painting that you need on the moldings and trim prior to decals and clear coat. Now this Fox uh, Mustang has black trim around the windows and the doors. Uh, there's really no chrome trim to it. Once again, these decals are pretty large, these uh, side body color decals. So you'll want to use some decal setting solution, but use plenty of warm water when removing them from the backing and uh, placing them on the car so that you can get them into position. And then go ahead and coat them with your decal setting solutions to make sure they stay in place and, and conform to the body's contours. After they're dried, give it a clear coat to seal in the um, decals in, on your body. I also wanted a uh, to customize my model, uh, so I printed out my logo uh, as a license plate and sized it up on a color inkjet plain paper printer, and then I uh, covered up both sides with some scotch tape, uh, see-through clear cellophane tape, and then I'll glue that later to the tag in the back. The clear coat has thoroughly dried, we can install the rear tail lights. So, um, also the interior light is installed on the uh, roof there, and then they get installed for, uh, from the inside of the body. Again, we will deviate from the instructions, and um, they have you install the glass and then mate the chassis and the body, but I, I think it'd be easier here in this case to uh, mate the body to the chassis first. So start from the front at about a 45 degree angle and slowly uh, spread the sides out of the car and shoehorn the chassis into the body. It'll be a tight fit but uh, kind of wraps around and you won't need any glue when you get her snapped into place. Now we can gather up these parts to install the glass. And, uh, there's a frosted edge on the glass that needs to be painted uh, black from the inside. So I just used a Sharpie uh, pen and guided it around the edge there. The um, you want to run a bead of glue around the window frames and insert the glass from the outside of the body. Uh, and I used Elmer's glue there so it will dry clear. The headlight buckets are slid into place from the outside and normally you might paint the uh, headlight lenses like a turn signal yellow on the inner lens and the outer lens. Uh, but since this was a custom build I decided to leave the lenses all clear uh, kind of like the European style uh, and install the lenses with some uh, Elmer's uh, glue or just any white glue will work. The rear spoiler is uh, a bright aluminum and I decided to use some metal foil on that. Um, you, you can buy this uh, at hobby shops or online. It's just like a self-adhesive metal foil and you just smooth it on to your part, uh, trim off any excess and then burnish it out for a nice uh, bright finish. So I covered the um, entire uh, rear spoiler with that material and got ready to use some super glue and installed it to the trunk. So then you cut the, um, the plate the right size and glue it to the body between the, uh, the tail lights. Now we can grab the final parts to install. Uh, paint the plenum there and the tube black and uh, decal number five goes on the plenum. Now paint the mirrors and the wipers black also and install the mirror faces and then attach the mirrors to the bodies uh, side, side uh, door panels there and attach the wipers to the cowl. Install the plenum into place on the intake and the hose to the plenum. Because this is a uh, basically a two-in-one kit, you'll have plenty of parts left over to add to your parts stash for future customized builds. Well, there you have it. This kit was released a few years back, and at the time, uh, it was one of the uh, the best replicas for the Fox Body kits. Um, 
then people had really been looking for them. You can still find these kits uh, at online auctions and uh, in larger hobby shops. Um, it's a good quality kit and the motor is a nice clean build and it has decent detail with some aftermarket park parts that would really shine. Um, the chassis is simple. It assembles easily but still has uh, a lot of detailing to it. The interior is nice to work with and it has uh, been fitted with both stock and racing de uh, interiors which is kind of unusual. Um, the body's one piece so you don't have to fumble with fit issues and overall the fit and finish of the parts was great. Um, the uh, locating de details were uh, very good for gluing and placement and it was a fairly new mold so it's uh, nice and crisp. Uh, no, no flash to speak of. So if I were you I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and also at our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.